Guitar kits. Are they any good? What they like to build? Do they work? I always wondered. And then somebody bought me one as a present. And so I had to set to and build it. Amazingly, this particular model, uh, you could actually just open the box and build the whole thing in literally minutes. All the wiring is plugged together and it's uh, simple as that. Or you could do a custom paint job, um, replace the pickups with uh, upgrade ones to your own personal specifications, change the nut, etc., 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 if you wished. I went for somewhere in between. I worked on the body and customized the headstock. Uh, otherwise, it's exactly as it was out of the box. I'll now do a little bit of a video on how I built it, which may be useful if you're planning on building one, because there are one or two things you need to take note of, which aren't in the manual. Then at the end, I'll do um, a sound check to hear what it sounds like, and final comments on was it all worth it, and is it any good? what's inside the box and uh, yeah there it all is everything you need to construct your guitar first thing to do is to check that the neck fits snugly into the slot on the body you could at this point assemble the whole thing just to check it out and make sure everything works then disassemble it and do the bodywork headstock comes in a paddle form where it looks a bit like a flag or, or a shovel and uh, you need to shape it you can download headstock designs and uh, with a bit of fiddling about with a printer to get the right size you can make a template and that gives you your headstock shape and first of all rough cut the excess bits off and then use a drill with a cylinder sander smooth out the curvy bits and then lots of sandpaper the neck I fine sanded and then gave it a couple of coats of English lemon oil also use lemon oil on the fingerboard use various grades of sandpaper to smooth it all down gradually ending up with 2000 grit once the headstock was smooth gave it a couple of coats of lemon oil and then a couple of coats of teak oil. Change the colour a bit, darkened it, make it look a bit more antique. And finally, finished it off with some wax boot polish. And then buffed up the surface. The first thing to do with the body is remove the scratch plate. To make re-threading the wiring once I was reassembling it, I attached some thread to the end of the cable so that I would be able to pull it through. Sanded the body down with a range of papers starting off with uh, quite rough grit right down to 2000. You could have gone further if you wished. For the rounded bits I wrapped some sandpaper around the handle of a spoon so uh, it would get into the curvy parts. Slightly dampen the surface to raise the grain and sand that down. You only have to do that once during the process. The finish on the body is entirely Danish oil built up in layers. There are eight layers altogether. There are lots of videos about this with conflicting ideas. Some say use a, a rag, some say fold up some kitchen towel into a sort of tool and rub it on with that. Others recommend using wet and dry sandpaper dipped in the oil. I used a combination of all of them. The whole process takes about a fortnight as you have to hang the body out to dry between coats. I found a useful way to hang it was to utilize the holes that are drilled in for the neck. After the final coat, I used wire wool just to equal out the sheen. I didn't want a shiny finish, I wanted something more satin. I just used the wire wool and then buffed it up with an old t-shirt. Fitting the tuners is quite straightforward. 
as all the holes are pre-drilled. The packaging also makes a very useful neck support. The scratch plate and neck pickup are then refitted. The jack plug socket and the pins to attach the strap. The earth wire then pops through and lies underneath the bridge housing and the other wires are all slid back through the holes and plugged together. The neck is bolted on, then it's time to string it up. The string heights are set using an allen key on the individual bridges. To set the intonation you need an electronic tuner. It's best to lower the pickups so the magnets don't interfere with the strings. Check the string is in tune, check the harmonic is in tune, press down on the 12th fret. If it is in tune that's fine, if it's sharp make the string longer, if it's flat make the string shorter by adjusting the individual saddles. Set the pickup height so you get a good balance between the two pickups. This is a personal taste thing. On this one, the bass side is higher on the neck pickup and the treble side is higher on the bridge pickup. And then it should be complete. Well, here it is, the finished article. Um, was it worth it? Well, it was lots of fun. And uh, yeah, I think the most impressive thing about this particular kit was the neck. Um, straight out of the box, it was, uh, it's not going to cut your fingers when you slide up and down it, which is a good thing. And the vegetable level, and it's very fast and slick. So uh, yeah, I was very impressed with that. And the plug together electronics made life a lot easier. So anybody could build one of these. Uh, Sounds a bit like this neck pickup. <laughs> That's just recorded straight onto my phone and it's through a, a Roland cube with uh, no effects whatsoever. That's just the sound of the pickups. Um, yeah, so yeah, you get a fair, fair variety. guitar was it worth it yeah uh, I really enjoyed it and the end product sounds okay and it looks okay and for somebody like me who is uh, not a craftsman uh, to produce something that looks good and plays reasonably well uh, that's a great thing you could decide to swap all the electrics and the, and the machine heads and all that sort of stuff for something more upgrading but I don't think that would make much financial sense. You could get a very nice uh, factory made machine for about four times the price of one of these but there would be none of you in it and I think that's the thing about making them. If you make them you have invested something of yourself in this and there's a kind of bond and attachment which you wouldn't get by one off the shelf. 
Also, you learn so much in the process of building it. That is really important information. And then you kind of fall into the abyss of, well, I've learned that, I'll use it again as something else. And I made that mistake, I'll put it right next time. And then, what will my next project be?